Welcome to the Weird Works Podcast. I'm Dr. Christy, your host. Join us for conversations about alternative and sometimes controversial healthcare topics. This podcast will provide the evidence that you need in order to make informed decisions about your health, to empower you with the facts that you need to advocate for your health, and to encourage you that there is hope your body heals. Join us from experts from all things weird, as well as the testimonies of people with stories of radical healing who were once told that perhaps their condition was a death sentence, that they would just need to live with it, or that drugs and invasive surgery were the only answer. Let's get into agreement that if there is something natural and non-invasive that could be helpful, that it could be your first option rather than your last resort. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Christy here on the Weird Works podcast, and today I am blessed to have Robbie Bessner, the Chief Science Officer of Therasage, which is a company that I am lucky to have recently aligned with and been exposed to. Robbie, um, he developed a technology that um, was in desperation to try to help his daughter when she was um, fighting challenges of chronic Lyme disease. And that is um, now infrared sauna and they are the leader in infrared sauna technology. So um, I'm gonna let him introduce himself a little more and his why, but just the topic today fits weird works because heat therapy actually dates back to the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians. They used to do thermal baths, mud baths, and um, even spend time in like hot air caverns. Um, Hippocrates was actually quoted as saying, give me the power to reduce or produce fever and I will cure all disease. So that ancient wisdom is so strong and I feel like so often all we're really ever trying to do is get back to that ancient wisdom that's always been with us and stray back away from all the modern technology that's kind of led us away from that internal wisdom. But this therapy has been around forever. They actually, Native Americans used hot vapor baths to treat fevers. They used heat to treat heat, so like cures like. Um, the Japanese and Chinese empires in the 16th century used it for things like arthritis and neur um, neuritis, rheumatism. And then I was even reading, this is really interesting, they used it for syphilis, urinary tract infections, arthritis, digestive issues, respiratory issues. And so when you learn about a technology like this, you're like, gosh, it starts to sound like it can help everything, but it really can because it's a systemic type of an effect. So Robbie, who's here with us today, um, they, I like to say they bring the cutting edge technology who, with practicality because they're personalized portable saunas and they're also very affordable. They bring all of that to this age old philosophy. So Robbie, say hello. Hey. Hey. How are we doing out there? Thank you for having me. This is yeah. such an honor on my side. Um, I appreciate you and everything you do. And I love your reference to Hippocrates. And there's one, there's, you know, I'm, I am actually a student of two things, nature, like nature's playbook. And we try to incorporate all of those features of nature into the things that we develop here. And um, I, like list, I like watching and uh, studying ancient cultures and looking, kind of diving deep into what kinds of um, ceremonial and or tinctures or formulations or cultural aspects of healing that various different societies and cultures have incorporated into their lifestyles to just improve their health and well-being. Yeah, and there's so, so much to learn. Yeah, exactly. So one of the ones that I love from Hippocrates is mm -hmm. if you ask your patient and or customer, you know, the question and you listen intently, you'll be able to get a diagnosis, a proper diagnosis, because eight out of 10 diagnoses that are made by generally the allopaths, because they don't have the time, they don't ask the right questions. So they don't have, and they don't have the time and the caring, not all. I'm just, you know, I'm just sort of throwing a broad um, blanket or, or net around that. Um, uh, um, they don't ask the right questions, so they don't get the right answers, so they don't make the right diagnosis, and then all of a sudden you've got some patient that's being treated for something they don't have and not being treated for what they do have. That's a horrible combination. So Hippocrates said, if you ask the right questions, you'll get the right diagnosis, and if you actually stay with that patient and, and long enough, listen to them, you'll actually, they'll actually tell you the cure or, or the remedy. So that actually 
kind of dovetails me into one of my favorite things I'm on right now is listening to the inner doctor inside of us. So as best as you are as a practitioner and myself, mm -hmm. the real doctor is the one that's inside of you that knows you the best. And mm -hmm. yeah, and you have to sort of negotiate the information that you're getting from the internet these days and from your trusted practitioner and then run that by your inner self to make sure that it fits and it feels right, you know, almost all the way along your whatever protocol it is that you're doing. So, so thanks for that reference. I'm really yeah. happy to be here today. Um, we are considered sort of the humbly said, like the gold standard in, in, in integrated full spectrum infrared technology. And our main product that we're known for globally is the infrared portable sauna that you mentioned called the Thera 360. And the latest version that we is just taken the world by storm, we call the Thera 360 plus. And we can get into some of those benefits, features, attributes later on when if, if you choose to lead me there. Yeah. Um, and then we also make um, what we call healing pads, which is the same technology, but rather than it being in a sauna that you sit in and you're basically bathing in these frequencies, natural light frequencies, um, this is more like a heating pad with the same energies, but you can bring it onto a localized area that you may want to heal, like a shoulder, an organ group, or a muscle group, and so forth. And so they're brother sister technologies. They both really work great, um, independent. One's like a floodlight, that's the sauna where you're bathing in frequency. The other is a spotlight where you can actually bring that frequency to a healing area that's specific to the body. And then we developed a whole series of stacks like uh, synergistic um, interventions like aromatherapy, oxygen therapy, um, guided meditation, all of those things are, well, this is the way I look at it, kind of the way I look at the world. So if the Therasage Thera 360 sauna is the hub of a wagon wheel, then the spokes of the wagon wheel will be all the different modalities we can clip into that sauna experience to really elevate your total wellness experience. So in 30 minutes, I can give you guided meditation, aromatherapy, oxygen therapy, you know, infrared therapy. And now our latest one, which I'm giving you and your and the audience a preview on is a reflexology module that we are now um, integrating into the sauna. So while you are actually doing sauna, you can augment all of the um, meridian points that are on your heel or your feet that actually tie out to all of your energy points based on Eastern approach to medicine, which would be acupuncture or acupressure points that open up all those energy channels. Again, another system that feeds into total health. Now you're speaking my language. I love the idea of multitasking. I'll get in there and in 30 minutes, get all these things done. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> well, why not? Time. Well, and you, I love, you're a real body hacker. What does that mean? Tell our audience what hacking, body hacking means. Cause there's a couple other people who have coined it, but I love it. Yeah, it's kind of the newer, um, newer description or definition of the combining of different kinds of therapies mm -hmm. to create a synergistic effect or a greater enhanced health experience than just one technology can do by itself. Yes. So it's kind of like two and two makes five or six, not four, mm -hmm. because there isn't, there is the individual health benefit, but then there's the combined synergistic health benefit when you put two or three of these modalities together. And because I am a study of anatomy, physiology. Um, part of my background is I was pre-med and actually in undergraduate school, I took engineering, psychology, biology, and um, accounting sort of stuff. That's a cool and, and combo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, the interesting part, I mean, I wasn't, I, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do exactly. I knew it was gonna be in the health sciences, but uh, this is, a, I'm dating myself a little bit here, but this was in the late 60s, early 70s. And I went to school undergrad in Boston. And that was the, the um, launching, that time was the launching of the whole psychology gestalt movement, mm -hmm. which, um, so part of my labs, I was actually training 
rats to run through Skinner boxes for behavioral modification. And the other half, I was actually dissecting rats for the physiology part to understand anatomy. So it was kind of like an interesting um, background in terms of eclectic um, exposure. Okay. And then as I move forward, I sort of refine myself and, and um, yeah. So um, yeah, so yeah, you were kind of my, my pain to purpose experience within my own family was that my daughter at a young teenage age uh, contracted um, chronic Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And again, this dates back almost 25 years and 25 years ago, Lyme was, it wasn't quite in its infancy stage. I want to say it was in terms of what's called Lyme literate doctors or the awareness of Lyme disease right. itself. Um, but it actually probably was around for years before that. It just wasn't as, as, as pronounced as, and even now I think it's still, to me, it's on a pandemic um, proportion, but because we've got COVID-19 now that's kind of trumping that Generally. pandemic scenario, yeah. Um, the challenge with Lyme disease is that it's very um, amorphic. It expresses itself in people differently. And so it's very, very often misdiagnosed because some patient can ex express themselves as having, let's say, the symptoms for uh, MS, for instance. It's really Lyme disease. And what I alluded to earlier, the, the, the non-Lyme literate doctor won't be asking the questions or won't, won't say, go take a Lyme test. Maybe it's Lyme. They're right. going to just say, well, you've got symptoms of MS, so we'll treat you for that. And then they stamp you with a diagnosis. And then you think you have MS. They treat you for that. They're not treating you for your actual um, challenge, health challenge. It's a bad scenario, right? Because you're not getting what you need and you're getting what you don't need. So, mm -hmm. so <laughs> it is very important. Um, that you kind of check in. It isn't just enough to get the diagnosis and to get actually a treatment protocol, but to check in with yourself and your practitioner to make sure that your body is responding accordingly and you're actually, you know, getting some real result. Yeah. But I'm sure you hear that every day in your own well, practice, Well, that can become right? a really hopeless state for people too, to be misdiagnosed yeah. or go undiagnosed and have the wrong treatment plan. And like you'll see, right. unfortunately, by the time some people come to us with these complaints, it can be decades before we're even on the right course of care for them. Yeah, I know it's a challenge. And I know for you, I'm sure you probably bet clean up for many other practitioners that preceded you with your patient that has tried different protocols. Yeah. They didn't quite work out. And then you have to unravel all that and then get yeah. them on course. When so, your daughter so from, was, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm just curious because there is a statistic about like people that get Lyme. There's not always a tick bite or that bullseye rash. So unfortunately, I think that's the stigma. But is it true? And, and with your daughter, when she was diagnosed, did she have a tick bite? Did she know it was a tick embedded? You know, what, is it the no. typical? Yeah. No. The way we found out was actually very obscure because she was suffering from endometriosis. And for people that don't know what that is, it's essentially a misplaced tissue or cell from an area of the body. Mm -hmm. um, so for generally, for, it's, it's mostly women related. So for my daughter, she was experiencing a lot of abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. And when we looked into that, um, we, they, we discovered that she had endometriosis and we actually investigated two surgical teams that did a very, very unique procedure. Again, this is 25 years ago. Yeah. Um, and where they had more than, they were able to, um, to say that they were having more than 99% success rates for helping young women or women in general that had that challenge. And so um, we sought out, found a group went through the therapy and supposedly within four to six weeks, she was, she was to heal and be in no pain. Well, six weeks went by, eight weeks went by, 12 weeks went by, she was still experiencing pain. So we kept no knocking on the door. So what's going on, you know? And then we finally heard, well, from all the women, 99% of the women that still experience pain after this surgical procedure, they have Lyme disease. Have, have you ever checked for Lyme? We were living in South Florida, um, as we do now, and it wasn't very prevalent down here 25 years ago. Mostly it was in the tri-state area, you know, Lyme, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, that whole northeastern area, you know. So it wasn't even on the radar screen here. And 
in fact, there weren't very many Lyme literate practitioners at that time, you know? So we, of course, we had her tested and of course she clinically tested positive for two strains, the Western and the Eastern strain of Lyme. And then we were on that path. So you'd think that that would be it, you know, the beginning and the end, but actually it was just, you know, it's sort of like, um, we're device developers. And when we develop things, we open up one door to discover that there's five more doors behind that one door. And then there's five more behind those five. And so it goes on and on. So that was really our cathartic process in actually developing Therosage and all of our products. And the company really served as a vehicle for two things. One, for me to develop unique um, kinds of technology that would serve my daughter's health challenge. And or to put me in front of smarter people than me, than me in the Lyme area as things were being developed there that right. could give me hints as to the ways that we could help our, our child and our family, you know, through her, through her health challenge, you know. Yeah. So that was sort of the genesis of our company. And um, we uh, have developed some pretty unique applications through the process. And it's really been a divinely driven um, you know, company and process in itself. Uh, and so we're here today very strong with very unique um, products, very unique health protocols. So as a company, philosophically, we feel it's not just enough to make a great device. What's really important is probably even almost more important is the education behind the device and working with the individual that could be your patient and or the practitioner that is you mm -hmm. to give you the the background so you know how to integrate our devices within your current protocols to enhance and improve the effectiveness of whatever we're doing together right and that could I be pain that. yeah mm -hmm. and you know there's so many categories that it turns out yeah. that that this infrared spectrum of light frequencies help with natural healing. And again, we can dive into that a little deeper if you yeah, choose to gonna, go there. We're going to go so science on you people today. We have to, because <laughs> it's weird work. So we have to explain how something like light and heat can help your body to heal. Um, but I really, what Robbie's saying is really a lot. It's important to me as a practitioner, because as you can imagine, like I get pitched by every company under the planet, like they have the best this and that and whatever, you know, and we have to really make a conscious decision of what we believe in, what is needed to help round out our treatment protocols. But like you guys have the science, but you also have the consciousness and, you know, and you're not just like you said, you care about the patient and the outcomes and the education. You care about the practitioner and their experience and knowledge and how to handle this technology. But you guys even care about the planet. So as we learn about your saunas and how they stand out from the rest, he even like takes into account like global impact into all this. And then of course, like the divine nature and ceremonial aspect, it's just all wrapped into one. So it's, it's beautiful. I'm very, I'm blessed to be a part of this company. I love it. Thank you. You know, what you just identified um, is really important because it came, a came upon us a few years ago. Um, I was relaxing on the weekends. I, we work almost 24 seven during the week and I take a day of rest and it's mostly through meditation and just shut, mm -hmm. shut the grid down. Yeah. Um, but that day um, I got texted by, uh, by another practitioner that was contacted by a customer who read a blog and some information on the internet that about infrared technology that was completely erroneous. Yeah. And, and it, it really, it really uh, irked me and bothered me. Sure. Not that there was er erroneous information out there because we all know the internet yeah. is wonderful to research. Right. Um, but, but there's, a lot of stuff out there, you know? Yeah. And then I kind of to dive, dove into that and unpack that concept a little bit further. And, you know, for you and I, we're basically healthy. We maintain our health and, and with God's, you know, willingness, we'll be healthy forever, you know? Right. Um, but what about the patient that has a chronic challenge that isn't healthy, that isn't clearly thinking, that is in pain, that is, you know, it, and has been for many years? Right. They're, they're not, they're not of sound mind, even though they, they feel that they are, they, they read that same information that you and I do, but there, it's not easy for them to discern 
the truths in the information. Because like you said earlier, every vendor out there says, my product is the best, you know, and all that. Totally. Um, and so that troubled me a lot. And so for that, we started a mission, which we call the WOW Project, Wellness Products of the World, mm-hmm. or um, we wanted a place where people could go that they could re- read the real truths that were vetted by our expert engineering team and our biological science teams so that they could kind of cut through all the smoke and mirrors yes. and get down to the essence if you need pain if, uh, pain relief or weight loss or challenges or or you know just detoxification protocols and so forth right. what are the best combinations what are the best products what are the best stacks as you know you alluded to earlier that yes. term biohacking and stacking and all that it's really just finding certain combinations of different kinds of technologies and protocols that enhance the the experience in general and for us what i do is i dive a little deeper because it's not just well vitamin d is really important for mm-hmm. this and if you do vitamin d therapy with this you're going to get that i look deeper and i say what are the physiological, the body mechanisms Mm -hmm. that we can recruit in the process to support your body's uh, ability to heal, which is truly the miracle out there. All of us have that. We were born with that. And unfortunately, in my terms, and I guess I'm, you know, going to get verbose here because I told you beforehand I do that. I, I think that today's world, besides it being very toxic, it's, somehow the environment has turned off our guidance systems, like our GPSs, our internal GPS. Agreed. And um, because of that, the epigenetics, the, the way that our environment and our lifestyles impact our actual genetics and the way we express ourselves, mm-hmm. that is shifting and not to the positive, unfortunately, because when you, when you study health trends, Mm -hmm. you can see that all the major chronic health trends are the curves are just as steep as they've always been. Right. But the real challenge that I see right now, Christy, may I call you that? Dr. Yeah, that's my name. Okay. (laughs) Yep. Um, Is that the age groups that the people are contracting these challenges are coming down. Yeah. So the, the challenges are still going up, but the age groups are coming down. Now that's a very dangerous, um, a dangerous combination, so. Agreed. You're kind of mirroring like something I say a lot to patients is like, you're gonna feel better. Like when we get you on program and they list their symptoms and we know what we're working towards and what their health goals and all. But honestly, like the long-term biggest benefit of them being on program is developing and connecting with that inner awareness so their body will talk to them and to kind of side that the we know that pharmaceuticals have a lot of side effects they list them for you like i'm not making anything up there um it's known but the biggest detriment is that by constantly numbing and suppressing your symptoms your body's ability to talk to you and you know just forcing physiology with pharmaceuticals is moving away from that divine intelligent design and having zero ability to allow the body to talk to you and that's another whole layer of the danger of constantly becoming you know a consumer of the pharmaceutical world and not tapping into some of these natural remedies so yeah and you can't avoid it because it's all over tv we see that like the it's been very craftily designed that you see this commercial for this new drug out there and they spend a minute showing Mm -hmm. this happy face and you know healthy family yeah (laughs) Yeah, frolicking through the woods or by a river and then the next 10 minutes they tell you about every possible way that that medication can destroy your life and health health resource but people do it anyway (laughs) Yeah, because they see it on TV. And if it's on TV, it must be good. Influential. And that's why we're doing this, right? Like we're sitting down, we're doing podcasts. Robbie has his own YouTube channel. Like we spend our times on weekends doing community events and outreach because we have to bring the truth. Like if we don't have the, 
we don't have the power of the pharmaceutical companies and all the commercials and all that influence, then we have to have this grassroots effort to get the truth out. So our audience are truth seekers. So this is great. Yep. It's cool. Okay. Big loaded question. How in the world does infrared work? What is infrared anyway? Oh, good question. I guess for people that don't know, yeah. um, there are a full array of frequencies that come from the sun and they start with um like uh x-rays and uh then it goes down to uv light uv light frequencies then natural light then infrared spectrum then microwaves then radio waves and right. gamma there's gamma is before the x-rays and it goes from gamma to radio waves from the most detrimental to life on the planet right. to the least least harmful which would be the radio waves radio frequencies <clears throat> so infrared kind of is in the middle of all those frequencies but is considered by most authorities in energy medicine as the most beneficial frequencies of the full array of frequencies from sunlight mm -hmm. so the caveat is uv frequencies there are three frequencies within uv a b and c and c is very dangerous to life but a and b um, will help the production of of, uh, of P, change your pH in your body. Um, they also produce natural vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And so those are super important for, for your health. Um, and there are a few frequencies in the UV spectrum that are, will alter your RNA and DNA, your genetic material, if you're overexposed to them. Mm -hmm. um, but in nature, it's such a beautiful thing. There's a, there's a balance. And so if you got overexposed to some UV spectrum, then if you stay in the sun long enough, so what happens is as the, it's called the azimuth, it's the relationship between the earth that's spinning and the sun. Mm -hmm. So as the earth spins around the early part of the day, the UV spectrum is more present. And then as the earth is spinning, then the infrared spectrum comes in. So if you got overexposed to UV light, stayed in the sun and got red, rosy and whatever, and you stayed in the sun long enough, the infrared spectrum would heal all the damage that the UV spectrum might have done from overexposure. So again, let's just dial the discussion back 8,000 years to our ancestors, right? When we lived in caves, we lived in tents, we lived on the land, we were nomads, right? Right. We were out in the fields all day, right? So we got way overexposed to UV, but we got also balanced or rebalanced by being exposed to infrared. And so right. infrared is the healing where UV is the nutrient um, frequencies. Infrared is the healing frequencies of sunlight. And it's broken down into three wavelengths, the near, the middle, and the far. Right. Most of the science on infrared is built around the far frequencies. Mm -hmm. We've taken sort of a page out of the playbook of nature and we've harnessed full spectrum. So all of our devices are near, mid and far. But if for the people that are just tuning in, if you were to Google infrared saunas, you'd get this big rage about we, we do near frequency saunas and we do far frequency saunas and they go back and forth and why one is better than the other. Right. And, um, my feeling about it from a philosophical point of view is just that, uh, you know, sort of nature developed all three of these wavelengths because they had very specific reasons. Mm -hmm. They they do they they help all of us in different ways, and um, so our company approach and philosophically was to harness the full spectrum. The near frequencies focus on skin related challenges, uh, the natural production of nitric oxide the natural production of collagen, which is super important. 65 to 70% of our body is made out of collagen. Um, and uh, the natural uh, helps with this last string of vitamin D production helps there. Uh, and so it also supports mitochondrial ATP in the Krebs cycle, ATP and ADP which is very necessary for us to have cell energy. So for all of us out there that have chronic fatigue or just have challenges, they're sluggish, their metabolisms are sluggish, the near frequencies would certainly be important for to support you on you and your body on a cell level. The far frequencies, the mid is kind of a, uh, a little bit of the near and a little bit of the far. So they kind of skip over the mid frequencies and go right to the far because 
the far wavelengths uh, penetrate deeper. Okay. And so they create um, vasodilation, which is the expansion of all your major um, veins and arteries, which improves circulation. Mm -hmm. And circulation in your blood carries all of your nutrients, all of your healing properties, and oxygen. And so those are all vital for health. And so we don't really take a position of near versus far. We just say, let's give you all and let your body take what it needs in order for it to heal. It's kind of like whole food supplementation. Like we're big fans of standard process and that's because it's whole food. So it's the same, like you kind of have the whole food version of sauna and infrared technology because nature knows best the way God or, you know, divine intelligence put these things on the planet. Like nature knows best when we start to manufacture, isolate, synthesize things, we're just getting less than what nature intelligently knows to put forward. So that's yeah. cool. Well, and then for your sauna too, since we're on that, that's a big important thing because consumers are going to, you know, maybe listen to this and then hopefully start their journey of maybe shopping for saunas and looking up different technologies. And of course, they're going to get blasted with all the, you know, getting caught up in who's cheaper or whatever. So that's important in yours. Do you want to talk about what else sets yours apart? Because you combine a lot of therapy. So like mine has red light therapy. Maybe talk about that. What's the difference between red light and infrared? Well, red light is a frequency that that's between the UV frequencies and the infrared frequencies. So infrared starts around 600 nanometers. Mm -hmm. The red light just precedes that. It'll be between the 400 and the 600 wavelength in as it's dialed in. This is all defined by science. It's not a uh, it's not an abstract right so so we like um well in our approach we we actually have two saunas that we sell now well we sell a wooden version that would be more traditional right. but the ones that are really popular are the portable ones because they fold up mm -hmm. um they're they're in and around a thousand dollars so they're they're the wooden ones generally the good wooden ones yeah <clears throat> will be in four or five you know, and higher thousand dollar ranges. So they're more affordable, they're portable. So you don't have to have the space um, challenges that many people have. So like we, when we, when we started saunas in general, maybe our company is 22 years old. So, so maybe 20 years ago or 18 years ago, we were making only wooden saunas. And when we started producing those, what we heard back, like as a device developer, I'm the co-founder and device developer of Therasage. And what we do is we have direct intentions in everything we make, but we don't think we're the smartest people on the planet. You know who's smarter? You are, and your patient is smarter because what happens is they get the sauna and then they go, gee, I wonder if it does this and can it do that? And then they ask those questions and it yeah. really kind of takes us along that journey, which is amazing so if we do anything really well is we have intentions in what we do but we're very active listeners so when we put the products out there we guide people but then we actually hear what people are looking for what they need and so what we heard when we made the wooden sauna was i really like the wooden sauna but you know gee i can't really afford four or five thousand dollars so robbie's thinking hmm how can i develop something that's less than a thousand dollars boom that was one of my quests. And then from the other side, we heard from the very affluent people, like we had a customer that was on Park Avenue in New York City and they had a multi-million dollar apartment, but it was 700 square feet. They had no room right. for the big wooden footprint. So now Robbie's going, how can I make something for less than a thousand dollars that doesn't have a footprint? That was my quest, why I developed the, um, the portable format, which now is like just crazy. like. We're global leaders on that particular um, device because of all the unique things that we've put in it. So it wasn't just that we've harnessed infrared frequencies per se and full spectrum, meaning that we've got the three wavelengths, but in the 360 plus, so we have a regular version and we have a 360 plus and we're driving people and the market to the 360 plus because um, two and a half years ago, I developed a very unique um, LED light bulb okay. so led light emitting diode yes generally is monochromatic that means a single light bulb with a single frequency mm -hmm. and many of the led uh companies out there 
they talk about having a blended or a uh, device that has more than one frequency. And all they do is have arrays, different rows of different lights that have different frequencies. And that's how they make their cocktail. Well, as an engineer, I put that hat on and I said, well, why is that? Why does a diode have to have one frequency? And there's no, there's no physics, there's no physics or engineering reason why, other than it's what the industry sort of adapted right. to be. So I just developed my own new diode that has three selected frequencies in each diode. So I can deliver three times the photon or light energy and I power it very with a unique power source. So I can drive that light energy through your skin into your cells and really do what it's intended to do in terms of physiological change and enhancement. I love it. So, yeah, so that's key. And then um, I'm just gonna go down some of the other features, yeah. okay? Yeah. So um, we integrate earth technology, earthing technology. Mm -hmm. So our, all of our systems are um, electrically grounded. So they bring the earth charge, like a grounding mat into the unit. And peppered on the inside of the sauna are gemstones. And in particular, a blood orange tourmaline stone that's farmed from a blue zone. I'm really going to go crazy. This here, is Christy. so cool. I love so, it though. I'm learning right <laughs> along with our audience today. It's so fun. Okay. So, so I had a, uh, that eight or nine years ago, um, I had this notion, like, why are, why is it that there are blue zones on the planet? Why is it that there are certain places and certain cultures that people yeah. naturally live past a hundred years old? Yeah. What are they, you know, <laughs> and yeah, what are they doing? And that really intrigued me. And so I, um, I was invited to go on a trip to visit two of the five, blue, six blue zones on the, in the world. Right. And, um, that was in the middle of China. I had to, I was on a bus. I was the only, I still probably hold a trophy for the only white male um, <laughs> individual uh, under the age of a hundred <laughs> to, to, to be going to this area of China. Mm -hmm. We traveled about 20 hours by bus into this interior part of China um, to discover for me on a discovery trip of why is it that people live so long? You know? cool. And what I did discover is that area was surrounded by a very particular kind of tourmaline stone. And that tourmaline generated what's called a negative ion. Mm -hmm. And a negative ion is an earth charge. And it was 20,000 times, actually my digital uh, calibration meter that I brought with me, it had so many zeros on it, it went off the screen. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen anything like that before. Oh, wow. And so I attribute many of the reasons why people live longer in that area to this stone. And I farm my tourmaline from that area and I bring it in and I format it and I put it inside of our, our devices. That's we so actually cool. have it, yeah, we have it peppered in the sauna and we also grind it up into micro powder and we infuse it into the materials. Wow. So even before you turn that sauna on, there are all of these frequencies coming from the earth that are so beneficial for for our lives and health, health and well-being. I don't think any other sauna has all that in it. Just saying, people. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody. About... Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, nobody's got that. Nobody even you know, thought so... to think of that, honestly. So that's good. What yep. about EMF? Because so... people do know that they need to avoid, like it wouldn't make a whole lot of yeah. sense to be trying to get all these benefits and then be sitting in this big EMF cl um, cloud. So yeah, how do overcome that? Yeah, and that's important too. And and um, maybe 17 years ago, I had this notion. Um, I I get downloads, you know, probably we all do, but I listen to mine. And this download, this voice said to me, you know, Robbie, anything that plugs into an electrical socket will generate a um, will generate an EMF. Right. So think, listen to that, everybody out there. Any appliance that you plug into your wall is going to generate an EMF. Right. So why is that important? Well, if it was just your toaster, if it was just your coffee maker, if it was just your stereo, that would be fine. But the problem we're having to, in today's world is it's everything, Bluetooth cars, Bluetooth microphones, blue, you know, wireless this, 5G networks. We're bombarded with these exogenous frequencies 
And what that has done is it's affected our own body body frequency because we oscillate at a very at a certain level. And an EMF oscillates about 80 times higher than your body frequency. And when you bring your body into a zone or an area where you have a high concentration of EMF, it brings your body frequency, it raises your body frequency. And that's not good because your body frequency works with your autonomic nervous system, your electrical system, your neurological system. Mm -hmm. And when that that system is working at a different frequency than what is natural for your body, the communication from your nerves and from your brain down your spinal column to your organs and muscles for your body to be healthy, that communication is all muddled up. Really off. Right. And so that's, that's an adult. Imagine a one-year-old that still doesn't have all of those neural pathways all set up in their brains. They're just forming and they still continue to form until they're 18 years old. You take a child and you put them in that environment, I believe that's a big reason why our autism rates are high and our social diseases like ADHD and ADD and all those are related to neurological miscommunications, oh, yeah. which I think is going to, which is just exaggerated or exacerbated by this constant bombardment of exogenous frequencies. So my dream <laughs> was that, I didn't know whether EMFs were good or bad then, but what I did know is that I didn't want the body to have to choose between getting the full benefit of harnessing the infrared frequencies that we're bringing through our devices and it being interrupted by EMF, right. the same EMF that you get from plugging into the wall. So I said, okay, I don't know good or bad, I'm not making that judgment, but what I will do is if I take the EMF, if I learn, teach myself how to remediate from EMF, block and shield EMF, um, then the body doesn't have to choose one or the other. It can just, it doesn't have to defend itself off of e about EMF. Right. It, can, it can just heal and get the full benefit of the, of the infrared frequencies that we're harnessing. And so that was my premise. I developed technology that was very effective in shielding and blocking. And then I had another dilemma, which was shielding and blocking is super great, but it's, it's really reacting. So the world comes out with 3G, it goes into our gaming, it goes into our cell phones, all that stuff. And I remediate 3G. As soon as I get it integrated, they come out with 4G. Right. As soon as I get it upgraded to 4G, they come out with 5G, 5G. and yeah. 7G and 10G. And so I was really perplexed by that until about 18 months ago when I came up with a solution. And that is something that's anticipatory and it's called uh, imprinting or harmonizing. Yeah. And so now I have developed a technology which we integrate in all of our products, which is a harmonizing technology that supports your body, your body field, your bio field, your energy field. It's like your natural energy shield from all of these exogenous frequencies around us, okay? Exactly. And if I could build that shield strong enough, mm -hmm. then whether you're in five, seven, 10, 11, 20 G, whatever it is, right. you're gonna be strong. Your constitution, your health and well-being, your body electric is gonna be um, maintained. That's and that's my latest opus. We're working very hard on that in the laboratory. We have integrated that in our technology. So we've shield, block, and we harmonize. I feel That's like I want to just walk around with, can you make a sauna next? That's like a bathrobe that we could just walk around in the world with. <laughs> we, we've made infrared clothing. We've done a lot of things in our, in our journey, yeah, but yeah. So that's, um, so EMF is an important one. Everyone should be aware of it. Absolutely. It's not our friend. Um, there are blood studies that are, that support what I'm saying to you. Everything we do at our company is evidence-based. Everything we do is FDA listed as class two medical devices. So we take the highest level of credentialing because our front line is you and you, your license is on the line. When you find us, and by the way, you said that earlier and it's not trivial. You spend a lot of time at conferences and reading and researching so that you can serve your community and your demographic the best. Right. And so what I talked about the WOW project, really you are part of the WOW project because what you do is go out and you find companies like ours, right. you know, that are on right. point. And through that, you can cut through all that noise and right. show your patients 
the clear view towards finding their source of challenge and getting a remedy and getting them healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to you about, because it's important, the materials that they're non-toxic and non-off-gassing. So like, and I know when I got my sauna, you know, you get new stuff and you peel the wrappers off and unpackage them. And then you're usually hit with this, like, oh my God, but I got to like put this thing in the sun just before I can even bring it in my home. There was like no odor, no smell. And then of course, if there was toxins, as you heat that up, that would be like emitting out of the, out of the material. Yeah. None of that. Yep. So that was another. Yeah. Really yeah, it's super design. important. We use, mm -hmm. we use all um, natural organic materials and everything we make. Yeah. Um, there is this concept or topic of VOCs, volatile compounds and chemicals, and they do get activated by heat. Yeah. And so um, if you're in a, a competitor or even around a product that is influenced by heat, it does emit these volatile gases and the body absorbs that, it becomes another toxin. And yeah, you know, yes, our system will detox you from that. But if you start with using good materials, it's like garbage in, garbage out, right? So right. if you put good stuff in, you're gonna get good stuff out. So right. you know, we've gone through great pains to constantly be upgrading and finding the best ingredients to put in everything that we do. And that's just part of our philanthropic um, input as a company. Yeah. So we don't spare any expenses. In fact, many times the things we put in our sauna, like we've just made three new upgrades and we don't charge any more for it. Maybe every three to four years, it builds up to a point where we have to charge a little bit more, right. but the value is in, and that really comes from maybe our background with our daughter. Cause at some point at, at certain points, her expenses, medical travel, doctor expenses were in the 30,000 a month range. Yeah, um, again, it was back in 25 years ago um, and insurance companies weren't covering that. And so my thinking in bringing our company forward was to make an affordable product that everybody could have and use to keep their, their strength and their health going naturally. Of course, it doesn't replace the practitioner, but but if a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the patient at home on their time, it just works. It makes everybody better. The, the practitioner is happier because their protocols are working better. The patient's getting a better result. You know, everybody wins, you know? Yeah, and right. so we purposely keep our prices low so that everybody can get in and get and enjoy this technology to self-help and give them self-love. And actually, I do teach this in my own coaching and I'm sure you do in a lot of ways. My devices, even though they support health, I would love for the, from a consciousness point of view is if you don't look at that sauna as that's my way of fixing my health problem. It's more, to me, it's an expression of love. It's the way I give myself healing and love and su substance. And that's important for me and important for my family and important for the kids that, are, that I'm, you know, that are looking, my kids that are looking up to me to be there for them and for us to help each other as a community so that we're healthier, that we can live out our dreams, that we can fulfill our purpose, that we can contribute to our families, our church, our bliss, you know, like whatever makes us excited about life. That's part of the reason why we're here. Yeah. And we're robbed of that because of our epigenetics and our toxic environment and all the things around us. And so as a company, what we're trying to do is bring us back, dial that back so that we can ha have ownership of that, of that precious jewel, which is our, our health and well-being. Right. And we say that like everybody wants to feel better, look better, be healthier. That's so generic. But all those bigger, higher purpose is really what motivates people to stay on a self-care plan. You know, that's yep. what it's all about for sure. So I want to talk about additional therapies that will help. So as we're, you know, detoxing the body, um, we use a lot of binders, things that are, well, we, we have natural chelators, of course, and then binders. So as we stir up toxins, we give products that'll go up and attach to all those toxins to help the body move and eliminate. And this is another category that I find on a consumer level that 
unknowingly they're they're trying to do these major detox programs diy style they're ordering stuff off the internet and either they're causing more problem and major like herxine or detox reactions or they're just ineffective and they're wasting their money so do you want to talk about like what makes them effective binders you and i had a conversation the other day and i learned a lot even just about you know charcoal binders versus zeolite and what they're good for sure of course um, actually, it's a great point, and I, I'm going to reference Lyme from time to time because yeah. we're we're super cool on that, and I think people through that example can understand what I'm what I'm saying. So, <clears throat> so when we develop sauna, part of the part of my science, as we, it goes back to my daughter again, she had three main symptoms: cognitive challenges, she had body pain, and neurologic. Uh, uh, neurological related stuff that was nerve related um and um she suffered from high levels of toxicity and um and inflammation yeah. and so in unpacking those those um health challenges i focused on toxicity and that's when i discovered that infrared frequencies will mobilize all the toxins in your body okay mm -hmm. so hence the sauna so now i take this in this notion, I put it in devices like healing pads and saunas to then stir up the pond, right? Yeah. To mobilize these toxins, unhinge them from wherever they're located in your body. But it's not good enough, honestly, Christy, to mobilize and stir it up isn't enough. How do we yeah. get them out? That's out. the key. Correct. Yeah, because, because chelators, if they mobilize the toxin and your detox pathways are not opened up, then all you're doing, it's kind of like, you probably had one of these when you're a child or maybe even have them now those um paperweights that were like snow okay. machines or whatever and you shake it up and this and the it gets cloudy and snowy and then it settles back down and then you shake it up again well that's okay. what we call retoxing so mobilizing a toxin and shaking it up inside for it to just settle back down either in the same area or a different area right. doesn't accomplish the goal that we're going for and that's where the binder comes in so there's a very famous compounder named chris shade he has a company called quicksilver and he he put, got this concept called pull catch. And so the sauna pulls the toxin, mobilizes that toxin from wherever it's stored and the binder catches it. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the appropriate binder present, ready to catch the toxin. It binds it up. So it takes the stress off of your filtering organs like your liver, kidney, pancreas, large intestine. And and um, makes the particles bigger so it's easily more easily expunged from the body either through sweating peeing pooping out and so forth right um so the binder was really a key important part of our protocols and what we combine or stack in order to make the top detox experience the best mm -hmm. now back to lyme many lyme doctors they go i'm a lyme doctor and i'm going to show you that i can get you know, lime out of your body kill that lime kill we it. don't That's really believe that right. yeah we don't believe philosophically that you're supposed to kill anything by the way um that's not just the buddhist belief but i do believe that lime epstein Barr, mm -hmm. streptococcus cancer all those things exist inside of us mm -hmm. it's really our immune system that acts as a way to discern and and screen and if we have a compromised immune system that allows an overgrowth or an imbalance that creates a symptom and and so forth okay so anyway the lyme doctors some lyme doctors goes i'm going to show you and they give you a lyme protocol but what happens is is that if that patient is symptomatic and almost anybody out there that's listening today if they've got a chronic challenge and they're symptomatic they're toxic that's it yeah that's it there's nothing more past that if you can lower your toxicity mm -hmm. and toxicity and inflammation travel on the same highway so if you lower toxicity you lower inflammation boom now symptoms start to go away no we are not addressing the underlying cause but we are making the patient feel better yeah and they get more of their life back and that gives both the patient and the practitioner a lot more time to actually work on the underlying source and right. then they can really clean it up from you know top to bottom or bottom to top right right so the lyme doctors that say give you this protocol then they they kill off the lime because mm -hmm. most of those protocols do work but what they're doing by doing that is creating another toxic event on top of a body that's already symptomatic. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. So what I do on the Lyme side and or for all of you out there is we just start a very simple basic detox protocol 
lower toxic burden, lower inflammation, then go after the underlying source. Right. And so, yeah. And I fashion it sort of like inside of us, we have this little goblet and the goblet overflows with toxins and that's when you become symptomatic. And if I can lower that goblet so that you're, it's only half full, that's the optimistic approach, right? Yes. Um, if it's only half full, mm -hmm. then if I do something that causes a toxic burden or load, it's just going to live lift it up a little bit, but not, con, you know, to not more exaggerate your current conditions, which you alluded to by saying a Herx kind of Herx kind of reaction or Herx reaction, which right. is a extreme flu like feeling, mm -hmm. um, and that could that's basically a toxic over uh, toxic response. Right. Um, so I'm not sure if that answered all of your questions or no, not. No, that's great. That's what a binder does for sure. You want to talk about like some aren't strong. What makes one good? Like, cause they're a yeah. lot of the over the counter. We're experiencing exactly what you, what you're describing is that we'll see, we'll discover toxins with our muscle testing in one area of the body. And then people are using, there's a spray that I won't name them, but you probably all know what I'm talking about. A spray that's been become very common that people are using. And then we find the same toxins somewhere else in the body. So it's just picking right. them up and depositing them and dropping them somewhere else. So right. talk maybe a so, little bit about what makes a good binder. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Um, that we, we break binders down into two categories, like the big sponge and the little sponge. Okay. And um, the big sponge is usually characterized by some kind of activated charcoal or carbon. Yeah. And the other would be a bentonite clay. These are very common substrates found on the planet. Some are better than others. Mm -hmm. um, and the one that I love is the one that's actually got the activated carbon because their core essence of all of their supplements uses this activated charged carbon particle. Mm -hmm. And that charge is so important because the body has a charge. And their particular charge carbon is light activated. And guess what light frequency activates it? The infrared spectrum. Ah. So <laughs> when you take their binder and you put it in, in conjunction with our sauna, mm -hmm. our frequencies are activating that carbon that is now potentiating and actually being absorbed by the body and the cell at a 80 to 90% higher rate. So you're going to get results from most charcoals and carbon and most clays, but the one that I'm alluding to actually is a better choice. You can um, give so cell the, cord props on my podcast. What? I said, you can give cell cord props on my podcast. Okay. Yeah. You I, can was, name I them. was refraining. I was refraining, refraining from that, but yes, it is cell cord that we're talking about. So, <laughs> so I love their binders and I love their biotoxin, which is the one I'm talking to now. So I generally start everybody off on biotoxin for at least the four weeks of the first four weeks of sauna. But, but what's very important to know, and this is where you have to really make a discerning choice because not all zeolites are good for you. Okay. And the reason why that is, is because zeolite itself has an ionic charge. It has, it's like a little magnet in itself. Okay. okay. And it's found in the earth. And one of its jobs is to attract heavy metals, okay? So you don't want to take a zeolite that has a heavy metal attached to it that's not lab tested. So you're not bringing aluminum, strontium, um, uh, mercury, any of these metals from the area that's farmed into the body when you're trying to get that stuff out of your body. Yeah. Right? So. So I love zeolite. That's my second go-to. So generally we start with the biotoxin, then we would graduate into a few of the selections, depending on, again, how the patient's presenting themselves. And if it's like a Lyme patient and they're really symptomatic, I'll start them on both zeolite and charcoal right out of the gate because the zeolites will grab heavy metals, microtoxins, um, and that's the byproduct of biofilms and the toxic waste that comes from microorganisms, which is really why that Lyme patient is symptomatic from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So we have gotten Lyme patients that are bedridden, like really symptomatic, asymptomatic in six weeks, just sauna and, and binder protocols. That's amazing. Now, again, we're not going on, we're not going after the underlying source, right. but what we are doing is cleaning up the soup cleaning up that muck that's in yeah. their blood system, you know, systems. Right. 
Yeah. Okay. One of the guys from Cellcore talks about like dirty ponds. He talks about, you know, if there's dirty ponds, of course, like you can kill off bacteria and pathogens, but if the dirty water ponds in our body, wherever it is, brain, gut, you know, digestive system, whatever, then of course those pathogens, pa toxins, parasites, whatever, are just going to go find the dirty ponds and multiply and build up all over again. So that's what you're talking about. It's kind of cleaning up the scene so that the rest of the protocol can be that much more successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's way more effective. And what we found when you do take a, a position where you do a detox before mm -hmm. you start the main protocol yeah. for the underlying source, everything happens in a much more um, expeditious and exponential way in terms of healing. Yeah. So, so like for instance, um, mold is a big topic these days, right? Yeah. And so you take a Lyme patient that's managing their health pretty well, but they still have a challenge and you put them, they, you give them, you put them in a mold environment, they're off the hook. They go from manageable to bedridden overnight. Exactly. Now, if you don't take care of the underlying mold challenge and you're still trying to heal them, it's slowed down tremendously because you, they're constantly being reinfected by the mold environment. You have to clean up that environment right. before you can actually go after even attacking what might be the underlying challenges or collateral challenges that are going on. So it gets a little complex, but really you can break it down into pretty primal and simple you know, building blocks for natural health. Yeah. for a foundation that you know prioritizing steps and peeling back the layers like we always everybody always hears that what is this onion you're always talking about well peel back those layers and then you get to real true root health maintenance wellness preventative care yeah exactly so we talked a lot you know success stories as far as the saunas i would just was going to ask you you know in general who should consider using the sauna like for the people that are listening you know if they're just tell, you know, do you have a list or do you want me to read my list? <laughs> do you want well, to just say you, everybody? <laughs> yeah, actually, that's kind of, kind I of actually true. would like to answer you with probably the wrong answer, which, or maybe what I would consider the right answer. I haven't figured out who oh, wouldn't, shit. who could not benefit. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's, it is a divine process here. And I'm saying this humbly, even though we're joking about it. Um, I can't figure out who, in what situation someone could not benefit from the sauna in one way or another, frankly, I really can't. Yeah. So it's not a panacea. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, what it is, is one, I think an important tool in all of, in a toolbox mm -hmm. for general health and well-being. And if you just take a look at the world, like there are, there are gl um, global trade partners, there are countries, there are um, uh, different um, cultures like the Baltic states, for instance, they're a society that grows up with saunas. They have them in every home. They have them in a community. They get together and they go to sweat baths. Like you said earlier, the Indian culture, they, they had uh, sweat lodges yeah. where they would do ceremonial things, not just to get poisons out, but to try to um, bring them. And I've done this a couple of times, actually one point I, <laughs> have you ever done a sweat lodge before? Have you ever done that? No, no. Well, this one, I did two Buffalo rounds and <laughs> it was so hot in this, in this teepee I was in that I actually scraped the ground to burrow a spot yeah. where I could put my nose so that the air my nose was breathing was cool enough oh. that, I, that I could actually breathe it. That's how hot it was. Yeah. Um, I don't recommend that for everybody, yeah. by the you way. I have a problem with but, breath. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But the point being is that, you know, like you said earlier, heat is a natural remedy and raising your core temperature, which is called hypothermia, is one of the best ways to help your immune system fight off invading bacteria and imbalances with viruses and bacteria in the body. So it actually launches that histamine, or it's actually called a heat shock protein response, which is a targeting mechanism that actually goes after these invaders, these foreign invaders. And it's really a very primal mechanism that our body has and the infrared sauna creates that false fever that internal temperature that can initiate these heat shock proteins and start attacking these guys even before you feel it symptomatically in your body like before it expresses itself as a sniffle or cold or congestion and so forth and that's pretty timely everybody's looking for how do i improve my immune system you know which rightfully so and what i like to say too is like even with our you know protocols and our clinic 
You don't have to be sick. You don't have to have a chronic disease. You don't have to wait for some kind of inevitable like emergency situation to benefit and start being proactive. Like we actually love having wellness patients in the clinic. It's actually a gift when somebody comes in and like, I'm really good. I just want to keep it or I want to improve function and performance. And so, you know, on my list, I was like, it's good for skin and appearance. It's the anti-aging remedy for sure. Um, for performance and recovery. If you want to be a high performer, you have to spend time in recovery. You've got to have an antidote to the stress, you know, that you put on your body. Stress, sleep, like those are major things that people come in for, you know, that need they need help with. Um, there's even awesome research on the saunas and helping with cancer. Lyme, like these things that traditional medicine just doesn't have an awesome answer, that it's not an A plus B equals C type of problem. That's that's when medicine gets, they get, they don't like those. They don't like when um, syndromes and body-wide, you know, problems come in. They don't have an easy remedy or, you know, medicine to just handle that. They get squirmy. And that's when they fall in the alternative medical world looking for something because they weren't able to get a full resolution. So that's why he yep. said it's not a cure-all yep. thing, but it's very preventative and just in alignment with body natural processes. Yeah. Did you say sleep in your list just I now? Did say sleep. sleep. Yeah. yeah. Sleep is super important. It's one of the primaries. Mm -hmm. um, weight loss is another one. Yeah. And optimal health, like each year, I dedicate a year to science and research. Mm -hmm. And this year, 2021, my dedication was to optimal health. So for the Every year prior to this, so for 22 or plus years, I focused on I focused on chronic infectious disease. Yeah. It's it may sound funny to say this, but it's pretty easy to move a needle and help someone that's chronically ill. Right. It's a lot a bigger challenge that's someone that is very healthy to maintain their health and build that optimal health. That's a different needle right. that you have to move. Um, so I had this notion years ago because we kept on getting um, getting uh, uh, um, um, approached by pretty famous athletes. Yeah. And they said, hey, you know, send me a sauna, or send me a healing pad. I want to be an ambassador for your company. And I want to show people that, you know, your stuff really works. And I thought to myself, well, you know, that's kind of a cool idea. And then I, I, thought, I got, thought a little deeper and I said, well, a, an Olympic athlete is kind of like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, right? Right. They're 12 cylinders, they're firing all 12 cylinders, they measure their performance, they measure their performance every single day in their competition or in their workout or when they're on the playing field or whatever it is. So they're really dialed in. Mm -hmm. And if I could create a technology that could improve the speed of a Maserati or a Ferrari, right. what what's that gonna do for the, um, for the Chevy or the Ford or the wow, Cadillac. Yeah, there you go. You know, yeah. so that was my notion. That's really what I what I um, what I decided was my my focus or how I would focus. Okay, right. and so we did take on some of those people. We we um, and and we just said to them blanketly, "Here is our device. We're not going to tell you what it's going to do. We want you to tell us what it's doing for you." And we use that research to help guide us. And so this year is Optimal Health Year. Mm -hmm. And we are working with these biohackers. We are working with this younger group of people that don't want to get sick. The ones you just talked about. I feel great and I want to stay feeling great. Yes, I'm getting older, but what can I do to maintain that and raise that bar? Absolutely. And I think that it's a wonderful category. Um, it's challenging. And we have created protocols around optimal health and all of the things that we've developed at our company, I will share with you cool. so that you can share it with your community and, um, and get everybody, you know, as I great as they can be. I love it. Cause once, even if you are, you know, everybody has their own starting place in reality. So even if you are starting with chronic health challenges, wouldn't it be awesome to just foresee, just look into the future for a minute and think that one day you're just going to be get to where you want to be and be able to want to maintain it and so we're going to shift your entire like paradigm of where your current reality is to like the best possible reality down the road for sure 
Okay, well, this has been super enlightening. I learned a ton, so I know the listeners absolutely will. I'm going to put links to um, Therisage and some of the research. We did decide to become a, um, an affiliate with your company because I just wholeheartedly believe it. You know, I've only been using it for three weeks now, and I'm like, I can definitely see improvement in mood, stress levels, just body aches and pains. I was on a pretty heavy actual Lyme protocol. I was having chronic um, rib pain, which was liver kidney pain. We muscle tested it and it wasn't going away. And just within three weeks, like it's very minimal. Like it used to be the first thing I would feel when I woke up and rolled out of bed and it's like almost gone. Um, and I think my belly fat is definitely decreasing. So I'm excited. Like, I love it. I just feel light as a feather. I walk out and I don't even, I get out of the sauna, like I don't even feel like I'm walk, the same body walking out of it that walked into it in the morning. So when I oh, love, nice. <laughs> yeah, when I love it, when I love something, we get behind it. And so we'll put links for people. And then um, Robbie's gonna actually be at our health fair at the end of July so you can meet him in person um he'll have a beautiful his his display is always the funnest because there's like bubbling water and ozone and lights and red stuff in the sauna you'll get to get to sit in it um you look like a little human marshmallow with your arms sticking out so you come by the booth and and meet us and um whatever else you want to share Robbie where can they find you where can they contact you well, probably the best way is our website, which is therasage.com, T-H-E-R-A-S-A-G-E.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can write us at info, I-N-F-O, at mm -hmm. therasage.com, or you can call our toll-free number, which is 888-416-4441. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, and if we anybody also... has questions, we'll definitely lead you to wherever you need to go. Go ahead. We, we also we also have a health coaching when you buy one of our products you have a, you're entitled to a free health coaching mm -hmm. and so you just make an appointment and one of our coaches will will get you know you make the appointment in the time and day that works for you so you can sign up for that and then we sort of track you for four to six weeks to make sure that you've gone through a few cycles using our devices getting the benefit having qu answering questions whatever that might be and the last thing we launched the healthy hotline, which is a YouTube channel that I, we did a line series for the whole month of May. I interviewed specialists in different categories and, and, and that is all present. So um, we're adding three new contents a week to the YouTube channel. So it's a sort of be the visual information site for Therisage so people can go on, learn about different things. And the, wow, the line series was just, I'm, I'm just, I, actually I'm getting a little, goosebumps over it because it was about Lyme because May is the Lyme awareness month you know right. um but but what what really turned out to be about Lyme turned out to be what started as to be about Lyme turned out to be about life and so many of the doctors and practitioners and PhDs and so forth that I interviewed they were just giving helpful tips about like what you need to thrive in today's world and wow it was just yeah. amazing I've so I'm proud of that. Concept. Yeah, I've tapped into this yeah. phenomenal. So we'll definitely, I'll put the link to that as well in the show notes. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me today. This was really fun. It was fun. Well, I'm going to sign off in good health naturally. Until next time, I'm Dr. Christie.